much. Um, first of all, I would like to express my gratitude to the organization. I have to say that I have been following the design principles and practices conference several years ago. And it's an extraordinary effort, the one that you do. And especially thanks to Loredana Di Lucchio and Lorenzo Imbesi, that has been uh, great colleagues. And we have been having several coincidences during this uh, uh, discussions and, and research work during the years. And thank you so much to Universidad de Monterrey, uh, who I will say is a sister university of mine, uh, since we are located in the same territory and we uh, got born, I will say, very connected and we have been collaborating in several uh, forum and spaces in dif very different ways. So thank you so much to Jessica Ochoa and Maria Eugenia Cáceres and, and, and thank you very much again, Jessica, for, the, for the, uh, 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 this introduction. I will uh, uh, share my screen in order to begin the presentation. And um, so we could uh, get started. Uh, here it is. Uh, uh, I, I am the, as, as, thank you very much for the introduction. I work in, at Tecnológico de Monterrey as the Dean of Architecture, Art and Design. And this, uh, our university is a private nonprofit university uh, that got born in Monterrey, but now it's a national scale project that has presence in 26 cities along Mexico. So we are almost in every medium size and mixed size cities in Mexico that you know that is a very huge territory. And we were founded with a strong commitment with society and dedication of a new generation of leader, leaders. So we are very connected to leadership and that is why Jorge's talk this morning resonates uh, uh, with us a lot uh, with this idea of being an university connecting to the territories and being change makers and we're in the places that we are. Uh, inside of my school, the programs of urbanism, architecture, architecture, digital arts and design, of course, are, are, are the programs where we try always to set the platform for doing this, this connect, uh, Polish creation, of course, education, but also impact. Some, some of you may know this idea of the third mission of the university, being very active and with positive impact in their communities. We are very committed uh, to that. And uh, uh, my talk is going to be connected with uh, uh, an exercise that we have been done during, during the pandemic. Um, the pandemic caused by coronavirus has become the single most uh, event on 2020. So in accordance to our responsibility and mission as university, as citizens, um, uh, we propose a series of debates and conversations with the view of provoking the reflection uh, of the role of design and the work of the designer in the face of the crisis in attendant uh, uncertainty. Uh, but also as an open window to think what is going to be in, in the future. So El Diseño Que Viene, uh, this design to come, has been one of these platforms. Um, first of all, I would like to, to say that this is, has been a collective work. Uh, uh, so uh, I would like to express that also part of this uh, work come from my, my colleagues and faculty, in particularly two of them, Claudia Clement and Alejandro uh, Diaz, who have organized with me uh, as authors and, and co-authors these, uh, these debates. Um, uh, these are the contents of my talk. And as I was mentioning, come from the collective reflections of various debates, six in total during the year. The dynamic of this session uh, consisted on a discussion and sharing the reflections of three key questions or three moments. The here and now, uh, related to the emergency, of course. What should the designer role be in the face of this healthy emergency? The second is root on the reflection on the discipline of design as it currently is. And the third inquiry focus on the future. Are there new roles that the designer should face or key aspects of change 
that they should take into account. And at the end of, I like, at the end of the talk, I would like to share some of the discussions, uh, not conclusions because um, it will be very, very ambitious to, to make canonical statements about the future of design, of course. So the intention is more to, to try to find the right questions about this and to, and to add to the discussion in these uh, uh, global platforms uh, about what design uh, is to come. Uh, and well, it started with this. Uh, Winston Churchill mentioned it, never let a good crisis go to waste. Uh, in this sense, the pandemic uh, changed dram 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 dramatically our lives, in many cases painfully and with losses. Uh, but try to look for the opportunities and take into account our responsibility as designers. We came to the idea to create a series of dialogues seeking the opinions of uh, leadership voices in our disciplines. These are the panelists that were, have been participating in the exercise. Uh, they all in the field of design with relevant roles and profiles. Uh, we look for diversity. So you can see that gender, ages, and professional profiles are represented. So some of them are practitioners, some of them are researchers, or some of them are part of very big companies. Jorge Moreno has been part of this, the previous speaker this morning. Uh, there is also, for instance, Mariana Matulo, who is president of the Cumulus Association of uh, uh, Universities and College of Artists and the Media. Some of them from the academia. There are a couple of colleagues of mine, deans of relevant universities in Latin America, Hernando Barragán from Universidad de Los Andes, or Mario Villa from uh, Pontificia Universidad Católica de Chile, and some other that are practitioners and or very relevant, I will say, in the in the in Mexican or, or uh, Latin uh, territory. Um, I mentioned a Latin territory, and this is was very important for us uh, to be connected uh, with it culturally. So all of them, although the debates and all these exercises and reflections were virtual, were organized in Mexico, all of them speaking in Spanish, because it was uh, very important to have a dialogue connected to the local doing the bridges to other regions, but with panelists with Latin background or culturally connected uh, somehow to our region. Under this idea or notion of decolonization, trying to bring the local in the discussion to the, to the global. So you can see in the map that we have connected several territories, but also related uh, to the local. It was very important for us. Uh, and we have done several analysis I would say in synthesis from the debates. One of it, of course, of course, is the semantic view. Uh, it is very interesting to see uh, how connecting six different exercises with experts um, and, and with diverse experiences uh, come to this kind of, uh, uh, of word clouds. No? And very interesting to see that understand is the most cited word that can give us some conclusions on, 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 on which are the, the, the key words that, that uh, were very present during the debates. Um, the first part uh, began with the here and now already mentioned, what should the design do in the middle of the crisis that we are facing? And very uh, interestingly for me, um, there, there, there were be during the debates and discussion this, this duality between the call of action, the idea of, okay, design has the power to respond to, to, to solve problems that we are facing just here and now. And, and, and also the other coin that is the idea of, okay, let's take advantage of this window of reflection and not to act immediately. And also to reflect on the scope of the opportunity that is uh, I'm going to, to explain a little bit more. This is an example of the work that we have been doing in our uh, university, of these two sides of the coin. Uh, in the midst of a global pandemic, uh, put on the table two possible extremes about exactly what result 
what role design plays with examples such as the community of makers stepping in, uh, creating design and open source platforms all the way through the quickly and efficiently manufacturing products so, such as masks, suits, hygiene instruments, respirator for hospital apps, testing kits, etc. Uh, and in the other side, in the, le in, in the left hand, um, the other coin expresses by the phrase, for instance, during the debates, don't design anything. We don't need another mask. We invite to the reflections and take advantage of the rapid pace of, and change, even to the point of causing confusion, in order to do something required by the design processes, inquire and observe. And not only this, but the necessity to search for the relevant questions has become in increasingly relevant. So in the left hand are more the idea is, is, is the, the create platform for the reflection. And these are some examples that we have developed, uh, not just in Tecnológico de Monterrey, but also connected with several other uh, universities and, and, and partners around the globe. One of these platforms is the one that I, of Dialogues, is the one that I am presenting, El Diseño eh, Que Viene. Um, I mentioned the idea of um, the scope of the opportunity. And a couple of weeks ago, Aaron Chichanover, who, who, is, uh, who, was, uh, who won the Nobel Prize of Chemistry in 2004, visited our university and referred to this as the, ne the neglected subjects of the, of the crisis. Um, uh, these neglected subjects uh, have been imposed and exacerbated, uh, and most of them exist prior to the pandemic. The public health emergency and the attendant difficulties have exposed issues that we have been dealing with, a, with for a long time. In our immediate environment, Unemployment, for instance, is a very visible example, one of which is, at least in Mexico, very linked to, to, to the economic recession and, and lockdown, and which is par particularly acute given the informal economy uh, forms such a large part of the economy in our country. Uh, this must be added to other social problems such as inequality, gender-based violence, migration, uh, but increasingly environmental factors such as pollution and a lack of access to water. The phrase, the normality in which we were previously living was not sustainable. I think that makes clear the need for a significant change and the preoccupation with how society normalize these issues and see them as unremarkable. One example of this will be the destruction of ecosystems, which recent students suggest is behind the COVID-19 pandemic, and which will continue to happen if attitudes toward environmental degradation and destruction do not change. Um, the COVID-19 pandemic has given us the opportunity to effect major structural change as priority throughout the whole of society. Some have referred to this as the Great Reset, particularly the World Economic uh, Forum, to, to set on the table different, very complex and linked um, problems that we are facing as, 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 as humanity. The phrase that if we fail to take advantage of this crisis, it will be a lost opportunity, stresses the importance of using the difficulties and pain also we are currently, currently experience, experiencing as a result of the pandemic to create a heightened social awareness. Uh, Schwab from the, from the World Economic Forum refers to this uh, as uh, the rare but narrow window of opportunity. Uh, some panelists connect these potential opportunities to the changes that we are seeing in the practice of design or in design activity which has been transitioning uh, from uh, uh, an activity that is problem solve, solve focused mainly to the identification of opportunities from problem solving to opportunity finding. Designed as a discipline 
is a powerful tool for identifying those opportunities presented by the crisis. In the middle of uncertainty, seeing their potential, and then having the conversation required, the conversations, sorry, required in order to provoke resilience and make both society and planet more positive spaces. Moments of great, of great complexity are an opportunity for innovation, definitely. Um, the second and very relevant reflection is regard our discipline, a disciplinary reflection. Uh, there were some consensus uh, during, during, the ex, during the dialogues on how our, disi our discipline shall evolve to a more extended practices, uh, connected, connecting radically to other disciplines and migrates from the tradition of being based mainly in creativity to link in a stronger way to other discipline to connect radically to si with science. Uh, the idea of extended design includes um, the long view, and I and I really like how this quote from Sarik uh, expresses it. This is the age of the tyranny of the now. Um, so the pra a, pra a, a new practice of design that includes a long view is very relevant. The anticipatory gaze. Uh, which gives design projects a longer term perspective as opposed to the urgency of the competitive market is very important. Also, the anticipatory gates incorporates a greater breadth of knowledge and number of variables as part of its operation. The long term vision of the project is invaluable in terms of incorporating sustainability and social justice, as Narik is mentioning, short term minimum makes it more difficult for us to construct a sustainable world and its short-terminism mindset has the consequence of a colonized future. The idea of broadening the, our discipline goes not only on, on the temporal side, but also in the order of change dimension. Um, this is a, 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 a graphic from Brandt that uh, explain the orders of change and, the, and also the velocity on, on them. According to Brand, the combination of fast and slow made, make the systems resilient. So how if we could be a more vertical discipline in the sense of being as usual, uh, very relevant on the fashion and commerce level, the ones that move faster, but connected deeper with the different levels, broadening the aim and ethos of our discipline. I think it's a very fundamental uh, question. Some authors, uh, I would like to add some reference of, of this idea of extended or broadening design. Some authors during the century have pointed out already these broader practices, recognizing that contemporary designers are now involved in much more complex problem and require further guidance than the doctrine of placement. Van Parer and Jones, for instance, advocates for, advocates for these in, distinct design domains. Uh, these four domains from simple to complex with a series of learning and skill stages necessary for negotiating increasing complexity. Uh, through these definitions, they uh, introduce the relevance of the four stage, understanding between system systems and design. If you remember the word cloud that I presented, the semantic uh, uh, analysis of the dialogues, uh, systems or system thinking was one of the most mentioning word during the dialogues. Uh, the idea of extended design has been also included in the, in the, in the definitions of the notion of advanced design. Shelley on his seminal book, of advanced design cultures uh, include this notion um, that put together the already mentioned long-term or anticipatory view and systemic approach too, but also in the horizontal, the transdisciplinary practices uh, mentioned by Selaski that, that is, all, is going to also be part uh, tomorrow. 
tomorrow in this stage uh, as the recombination of instrument and competencies. And well, more recently, the, uh, in 2019, uh, we worked together uh, with Selaski and other colleagues, Formia that is going to be also tomorrow and, and Leon. We propose that uh, the advanced design cultures could have a framework where the time processes and culture could be the constructs uh, to understand the enhancing or broadening uh, of our practices. The discussions, the, the discussions include recognition of what has been achieved, but also reivindicate fundamentals, uh, those elements that form part of the design and which need to be uh, centered, recognized and empowered. The value of design was something that was very present during the dialogues and uh, was expressed that with phrases like, we are a discipline dedicated to imagining what which doesn't exist while simultaneously saying, not only imagining, but planning the steps which need to take place in order for transformation to take place. A topic which has been widely addressed, I think, and is referenced by some as design leadership. Jorge Moreno also uh, got to that point um, much more brilliantly than, than I am <laughs> doing it. Uh, but this idea of, of the expert design that Mancini mentioned and, 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 and the way we could have uh, impact or possible impact, not, not, not just by imagining and projecting, but, but also as uh, a way to make it happen. Uh, Nelson also, men also mentioned design leadership, but explained it in a, in, from the point of view of the expertise of design. Um, more, much more recently, uh, Nelson explained these three levels, uh, where the first are the routinary and the adaptive expertise, uh, knowledge in action, but the third one is the design expertise that is focused on create change. So I, I think that this idea, the, the, this definition of design leadership of uh, uh, an expertise that creates change is something that we can put in action or make things happen is another way to say it as, as Mancini and Jorge Duris in morning mentioned it already. Uh, and well, the last part of the discussion um, goes into the future. Uh, which are the major changes that are going to shape our discipline? And also in a broader, more ambitious way, which are the transformation that are going to take place and we are going to face a society. Uh, and well, some of the conclusions were that uh, we have, of course, to rethink some of the paradigms. There is a consensus that the normality that we are living is not sustainable, I already mentioned. Uh, design is going to be very relevant on creating the new narratives and the transitions to get there and something that has been at the central at, at the center and has to be central sorry is the ethical imperative we need to rethink our role in society um, regarding the future i uh yuval noah harari visited our university some days ago very recently and he mentioned this phrase that I think that explains uh, many of the discussions. Different parts of humanity have different futures. Mm -hmm. And that is something that we have to face it and design uh, can be a very, very powerful on, 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 on uh, approaching this. Uh, the debates start the reality of, on sustainability of modern lifestyles. Uh, it is becoming very uh, increasingly clear that the paradigms we have previously governed our relationship with the environment need to change. And uh, we need to reach a consensus on an alternative ways for continuing inhabiting the planet. Uh, and a very risky thing regards the future is that it's not only plural as we have learned from design futures, but so we need to migrate to a more central discussion that is that future is unequal. And uh, to give a brief example of this, 
um, is uh, these new geographies of power. The geography of power is dramatically changing. So um, author refers to this inequality with the notion of a, a K shape recuperation from the pandemic. This idea that some countries are going to, to go out from the pandemic uh, winning and gaining growth, but some economies and some regions are going to lose radically. For instance, one of the risks stressed by Harari are the new era of colonialism and imperialism based on, 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 on data. Who controls the data flow? It, it, now we don't need to, 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 to get into a territory to, to, to be colonialist. Where, who controls the data flow is the one that is going to say uh, which territories or countries are independent and which are data, data colonies. Um, another uh, paradigm rethinking uh, that, come to, that came to the spotlight is growth. Uh, growth as the dominant model uh, that it is based on the belief that the only arbiter of progress and social well-being is continual economic expansion. This belief refers back to the report uh, published in the 17th by the Club of Rome, El Club de Roma, uh, The Limits of Growth, you, you, you all know it, which was the first sound of alarm about how elect Unlecked uh, growth put the limited resources of the planet under stress and caused ecological and environmental degradation. Another significant, more contemporary reference is this one. You, you all know, must know it, the donut economy, which makes clear reference on two specific limits. Uh, the minimum limit, the social foundation, which is concerned with the, ensuring the basic well-being of human beings, and the maximum limit, the ecological ceiling, which represent the capacity of our planet to be just a space for the humanity. Using this logic of maximum and minimum limits, design must provide a constant and consistent frame of reference for a future practice. Design has uh, always act from the limits. It is on its nature to recognize them and act from there. It is time to embody the planetary limits as framework for the design practice. And well, quoting uh, Buckminster Fuller, you never change by fighting the existing reality. We need to build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete, according to Buckminster Fuller. Uh, the discussion deepened and highlights how uh, uh, our ways of living must be reimagined. Uh, on a different scales. Uh, on the grand scales, rethinking in our cities and in the small scales, rethink our domestic way of, li of living. Uh, in the middle of a pandemic where it seems that one of the principal weapons of our armor is the social distance scene, this could bring us into the conflict with the paradigm of the closeness and the social dynamic related to well-being. Um, and, and, and well, something that came out also in the discussions, very important, are then the importance of creating new narratives and the transitions. Uh, um, at the turn of the century, in 2008, Joseph Campbell theorized that those narratives uh, or narratives uh, who have permit humanity to organize and construct large communities, large community systems, uh, will morph into common beliefs, which will self-regulate societies and foment a sense of community. It is, a shared, it is shared narratives which have, have permit the creation of our civilization. So as a part of these debates has arisen the potential of design to build the future that we want to create and what we want, and to create the narratives uh, of great opportunity. Given the current lack of uniting social contracts, 
it, this is very important. The latter is important because given the growing polarization if in, in, in our societies, there is an even more pressing need for us to dream of a common future. Um, when faced with a present of such complexity and, and uncertainty, future is the one thing that we have in common. And it seems that design is capable of navigating this common ground and inspiring society through these uh, uh, narratives. Narratives which unite and inspire us uh, and, they, and also together with the narratives, the roads which we will take uh, to get there. So transition design is going to be crucial for the future to come. Uh, transition design described by Irwin as the design activity that proposed radical changes in sociocultural paradigms that acts on system levels to describe a map out of trajectories for future change. Uh, well, and finally, something that uh, has to be at the center of, of this is the ethical imperative. Having a profound reflection on the social function of design in the world today. Our reflection should attempt to discern the fundamental values that need to define our professions. As Monteiro, as Monteiro explained, we are not pixel pushers, we are not order takers, we are gatekeepers. So we have to have a strong commitment on, on, on this ethical uh, imperative. The need for us to consider an axiological code of design reverberates during the, during the discussions and is understood as an opportunity to clearly define the values of our discipline in the 21st centuries. These values will help uh, us to construct an ethic which facilitates decision making criteria, for instance, and in this way positively influence on the creation of a more and just sustainable uh, world. At the end, design all, has been always uh, political, and this is a very, I would say, brilliant example of that. Maybe all, all of you know this project of the past year um, by Israel, uh, which is just in the border between uh, Tijuana and San Diego, which is the most cross-border worldwide. And you know that the stress that has been uh, uh, having uh, in, in terms of the political decisions, uh, and he creates these these CISOs, pink CISOs that makes people uh, play together again between the border. Uh, well, finally, just to 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 go to the end and maybe open for some question. I would like to try to uh, sum up um, or, or, or resume a couple of, of proposals for that came out for this platform of the Liseño que viene, uh, where time, culture, and processes, the frame that I already presented that comes from the advanced design cultures idea, um, could be a ways to, 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 to frame the broadening activity, scope and approaches of the design practices and reflections that are the extension in time with the frame, framework of the long-term, for instance, intergenerational too, that warranty the planet for the future generations to come, um, broader in the processes because the, we need a design that get radically transdisciplinar, decentralized and participatory, and in the vertical, uh, very cultural transformative, making things happen uh, with a lot of uh, uh, leadership. And what you see in the screen now are uh, another view of the discussions. Uh, this chart express a resume of what where the transition mentioned and, the, and, and, and during the dialogues. Uh, not to be like something black and white or negative and positive, or nor instead of, more in the idea of a transit to connect with a more contemporary, contemporary relevant practice. Uh, 
some of them has been already discussed in the design research arena, maybe for decades too, but are not yet a generalized practice, at least in our region in Latin America. So going for from uh, design thinking tools, problem solving very particular issues, but adding advanced design culture with this idea of framework, uh, more, more a broader framework uh, for being focused on product design to get our process more in the table and more relevant and understandable. Um, to, for being focused on, on context, on, on content, sorry, this link very much with the previous one, the product, to focus on the strategies, which are the strategies to act between the limits, for instance, uh, for being a discipline based in problem solving, to being proactive. Uh, this connects with the idea of leadership that, that, that I already mentioned. And uh, for acting the short term to include the long term as a, as a, as a, a approach always present in our practice. Uh, for being market driven that we have been, we have discovered that design is very successful on that, to try to connect with a more community driven um, framework for decisions, uh, for having this global uh, perspective to the local action, certain kind of cosmopolitan localism that Mancini mentioned, and uh, for being user-centered design, that of course is a, 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 a very powerful tool, from being more life-centered design or planetary-centered design. Um, well, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, the platform in platform presentation was was uh, uh, the the idea. The objective was to set the relevant questions and trying to find out the first steps to discuss about the design to come. But we couldn't. Uh, of course, be so ambitious to have uh, definitions and being canonical. So the design to come uh, is still to be described. So that is why I feel very honored to be here sharing with you because as a design community, we all are gonna build the design uh, to come. So to get to the end of this uh, presentation, I will ask you to, to to share your thoughts about it in our platform. You can visit uh, the website, El Diseño Que Viene. Uh, in English will be El Diseño Que Viene. <laughs> Sorry about the joke. Uh, but uh, uh, it, 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 it is in Spanish and English, so you can get your contributions to these three words regarding the here and now, the disciplinary reflection, and the future to come. Um, the dialogues are there. If, if you would like to, to, to see it. And also there are also some more extended documents about the reflections that you can download. Uh, and, but most more important to participate because we, we believe that the design to come is something that we are got to build every one together. So thank you so much. It has been an honor to share this with you. Um, um, gracias. Gracias.